Welcome to the All Star Planning Podcast. My name is Kelsey, and this is the place where I talk all things teacher lesson plans. Today, I am talking about debatably the most controversial topic in education, and that is the value of homework. <laughs> so, homework is like a weird thing, okay? Um, I am reading more and more articles about districts just completely eliminating homework. Like the entire K to 12, nobody's doing homework. I kind of get it, but I also kind of don't. I honestly don't know what my opinion on homework is. It's kind of weird to me because, okay, let's go through it. On the no homework end, the reason people don't assign homework is because there's a lot of reasons, but one of them is that it's nearly impossible to determine if the kid has done the work themselves, right? So we assign homework because we want kids to practice with the things that they have learned. We want them to do it in a new environment. We want them practicing the work without the help of a teacher to guide them. We want to see if they can do it solo, right? Um, I know for me when I was in Algebra 2, which is where my math education fell apart, um, I would be able to watch the teacher do it in class and I understood when she did it and she walked me through it in, you know, a scaffolding and when I got home and had to do homework was when everything fell apart and it was terrible and I hated it and <laughs> right there in that moment is when I broke off my relationship with math. I said, math, I am a single girl. We're broken up. I don't like you anymore. So um, people don't give homework because it's hard to determine if the kid is doing it themselves. When I started calculus in college, I found some website that would do the math for me. And you can bet that I used it. Um, and every single year, more and more of these programs come out. My kids now are telling me that there's an app. They just take a picture of a math question and the app solves it for them. Like, one, that's incredible because there's a lot of people out there who don't like math. And honestly, what good is high level math in everyday life? I mean, I just don't get it. But <laughs> like, as a chemist, I could use calculus, but as a chemistry teacher, so, so with all of these new programs coming out where kids can just get answers to these questions, but also um, they have each other, they have older siblings or family members or friends, uh, their parents, they could just Google stuff. How do you know that the homework that's being turned into you is that kid's authentic individual just from their brain testing their knowledge work? You can't know that. You just can't. So the idea that homework is being used to assess kids learning, not going to work. You can use it to ass uh, assess their resourcefulness. When given the opportunity, did you use all of the resources available to you to find the correct answer? That I think is a very worthwhile cause. In fact, I give two take home tests a year. I think I do one over um, February break because it's not associated with a holiday and then I do one when they study for their midterm but those take-home tests I tell them please use every resource available to you use Google use your notes come to extra help and work with me work with your classmates I give out a lot of different versions of the take-home test so they just can't copy from their friends but I use it more or less as a study tool like I'm giving you this take-home test to one, increase your test average, two, give you an opportunity to look at test questions, review them, get familiar with the knowledge and the format, and then three, to kind of force you to study for an upcoming test. <laughs> I think it's a great tool. But in that case, I am expecting every kid to get high 90s or at best 100 because they're using all of their resources to come up with the answers. So I am not assessing their knowledge in that sense. I'm assessing their resourcefulness. But what it comes down to is that there is no way to ensure that a kid's homework is just the knowledge in their brain. So 
the question rises, is it fair to give kids a grade based on their resourcefulness or their access to resources? When I was in high school, I didn't have an older brother or sister to ask for homework help. My parents did not know Algebra 2 that they could help me. <laughs> they didn't know um, the very intricate details of my AP Chemistry class where they could have helped me. Uh, they could offer moral support and say, hey, here's a computer, go look it up on the internet and find yourself some answers. But I didn't have anybody to talk to at home. When you have um, the last kid in a family who has five older brothers or sisters and they've had every single teacher in the building and they've kept every single homework assignment that they've ever had, you have a kid who has access, right? Um, here's a secret. <laughs> um, when my brother and sister, I'm the oldest of three, I have a brother and a sister and when they were in elementary school, there was a project that they had to build like a Viking ship or a pirate ship or something. So I'm 99% certain that my dad built the Viking ship, gave it to my sister. She brought it to school, got a good grade, gave the pirate ship to the neighbor. The neighbor used it the following year. Then the neighbor gave it back to us for my brother to use. And then we gave it back to the neighbor. We used the same project four times. How do you know <laughs> that the, the work that you get back from a kid is not the work of a parent of a, or of an older sibling or from Google or from one of these fancy apps or it's a recycled project from the neighbors. You can't know. You just can't. So is homework really fair? I don't think it is. I really, I just don't think it is. Um, but at the same time, I think that it's very important that we are um, using this opportunity to get kids to look at work and to struggle with work without a teacher around, I think that that is super valuable. So how do we make it work? I don't know the answer if I'm being completely honest with you, but I can tell you that the homework that I give has evolved. So my very first year, I would have kids do homework and I would check it for accuracy. I would collect homework assignments and literally grade them. That was ridiculous because my first year I had like 160 students. Um, my second year I had roughly the same, but I had chemistry and physics. So it was different <laughs> things that I was grading, which split my brain into thinking about both chemistry and physics. It was not a fun time. So I very quickly gave up on that. Um, and then it transitioned into giving kids homework and then doing spot checks. I was just grading their behavior. Did you do your homework? What's the value in that? I don't see any value in that. Um, I don't think that behavior should be part of a kid's overall grade. I think that grades are a way for us to numerically quantify a kid's learning and understanding of concepts. Doing a homework based on effort thing just doesn't add up into that. So I will give a kid a test, an assessment, a whatever. And I'll say, if you 100% understand this, you could teach it to a kindergartner, then you will get a 100 out of 100. Grades are how we numerically quantify a kids' understanding and learning of a concept. So if we have a kid, I mean, our report cards. If a kid has a 100 on their report card, you can assume that they could answer just about any question within that course because they know all of it. Uh, if they have a 90 on their report card, then you can assume that 90% of the time they would answer correctly and 10% of the time they would answer incorrectly. That's the point. It's, it's a judgment, a quantifiable numerical judgment of how well a kid understands stuff. If you do your homework, but you don't know anything, is that going to inflate the grade? Is it going to give a false representation of what the kid understands? Is it going to be misleading? 
if you have a brainiac kid who goes home and has to babysit or has a job or um, mom and dad work nights and the kid is virtually home alone even though they're really not and that kid doesn't do homework does that mean that they have a lesser understanding of the content I don't think it does so this homework thing becomes like a weird spot right and again I think that it's important that we use every opportunity to assess kids learning I think that pushing a kid into a different environment and having them do it on their own without a teacher around to help them is a great tool but you can't ensure that a kid is doing it on their own and now at this point you can't wrap behavior up into their overall grades because the grade is supposed to assess understanding and learning not behavior so it kind of becomes this negative thing where homework isn't all that helpful to assessment and then you don't even know what you're getting back you don't know if it's just from the kid if it's from the kid and their parents if it's a hand-me-down from the neighbor you don't know if this kid um, you know life gets in the way and they just can't do it so now their grade is suffering even though they may be a brainiac genius I mean I don't think any of that seems fair but at the same time I think it's important that we assess kids and we give them opportunities to struggle and we give them opportunities to practice all of my years of teaching I have taught 10th grade chemistry so that is what we're going with here uh, that's where I have the most experience so that's what I'm talking about I am NOT mentioning my strategies for um, college level college credit nothing quote advanced just my basic high school level kids my homework is optional I know I'm losing a few of you just hold on I will <laughs> teach a lesson we do some practice in class we go over it I will give the kids something additional or I tell them finish up the classwork for homework and I will have some of them do it some of them do not I never punish kids for not doing homework I just reward kids who do homework okay so what this looks like is when I give a homework assignment I just have a checklist um, Bob did it Sally did it Beth did it Joe did it Susie did not so those four will get a check Susie does not get a little check mark and then when it comes to the end of the quarter and we have a kid who has an 83 who would really like to have an 85 I will go to those records and look at the proof did this kid put in enough external effort on their own for me to be able to give them a small bump and it's not always homework I don't just judge it in terms of homework I will also judge it in terms of the number of uh, extra help after school sessions that they come to or lunch review sessions that they will come to um, there's a few other things I try to do it in a way that's fair things that all of my students have access to so I don't love doing after-school stuff because some of my kids work or they babysit um, they have sports I don't really like to hold that against them but here's the deal every kid in my room has the ability to turn in their assignments on time they have the ability in class to raise their hand and ask questions they can show me in my classroom that they are a hard-working kid this is the kid who comes in and will put the phone in a backpack or in a pocket and won't touch it because when they are in my classroom they're getting down to business and they are ready to learn so these are things that I keep in mind when kids are looking for a little boost okay but I don't think that this is terribly wrong because if a kid quote doesn't meet the criteria at the very least they are going to get the grade that they earned on their own and I'd like to mention in addition to this I also allow my students unlimited retakes on their tests so 
the grade that they get is really the grade that they earned. It is not based on their behavior. It is not based on their ability to do homework assignments outside of school. It is not based on um, you know, their behavior in my classroom. It is based on literally what they have learned. So homework is optional. Um, you can listen to more about my retake policy. You can go listen to that to learn more about my retake policy and what I specifically do. But um, the overall grade that I give my students, I know is based on their learning. And homework, in my opinion, does not necessarily tell me what my students have learned. It just tells me uh, about their work ethic. And work ethic, I don't believe, should be part of their chemistry grade. So, um, how does optional homework work? I'm glad you asked. I will give the students an assignment, tell them they can do it for more practice. Most of my kids do it because my homework assignments are not ridiculous, they're not crazy, they are like five to ten questions and honestly most of them will reappear either verbatim or very close on their unit test. So the kids kind of have an incentive to work these problems to begin with but um, they're small assignments. They're not anything that's gonna you know destroy a kid's evening but they will come in the next day and I will give them the answers and then they're allowed to ask questions and that's it. I don't spend 20 minutes going over homework that was optional. The kids have the ability to check their work. It's a self-assessment thing and they ask questions based on what they need. That's pretty much it. I put a lot of responsibility on my kids to learn. A lot of them rise to the occasion. Some of them don't and they need, you know, a little push and a little encouragement, but most of them are willing to do it. So for me, even though I have this retake policy and um, I do an interactive notebook and my kids aren't really taking notes, they do have a lot of responsibilities in my room. And one of those responsibilities is choosing to do optional homework, which many of them, as I said, rise to that occasion. So I give them responsibility in different ways than most people do, but I think it still works and it still sends the correct message that they are the ones in charge of their scores because they have unlimited retakes because their homework is an option which will prepare them for their tests um you know it's just it all works up to them taking ownership of their grades which let me tell you there is nothing more refreshing than having a kid come to you with high 80s low 90s and say I can do better than this. I want to retake a test. I can do better than this. I should have been doing my homework this whole time. There, oh, I live for it. I live for it because my students have every opportunity to prove to me that they know my stuff. They know my content. I don't care when they learn it. They're going to learn it at some point. Um, and those who do the homework have the best opportunity to do well on the test and be able to skip a retake. So <laughs> this is really how I explain it to the kids. On the first day of school, I talk to them about the unlimited retakes. I talk to them about um, optional homework. And really what that comes down to is that if you get an F on your report card, it's because you didn't take advantage of all of the opportunities that I gave you. So I almost never feel bad about giving a kid a low grade on their report card because I know that I gave them every opportunity that I could. Um, and that's just what it comes down to. There is no ability for them to be able to say, well, you know, when I go home, I have to babysit so I don't get to do my homework. So that's why my, my average is 15 points less than it should be. That doesn't happen in Miss Reeves' classroom. I don't want it to happen to any kid because Kids have a lot of responsibilities that they shouldn't have, which makes me very sad and upset. So in my room, I try to shift those responsibilities to them just working towards and caring about their education and learning. And I think that honestly, optional homework does that. And I think it fits the bill of not assessing kids based on their behavior. It kind of sort of pushes them to learn on their own. Um, and then I, it makes it easy for me because I don't have to grade anything. 
I mean, is that not the greatest thing you've ever heard? Not having to grade something? If I ever had to grade another homework assignment, I'm not here for that. Um, I do have kids occasionally turn in homework assignments because they want me specifically to look at it, and I do that for them. No problemo. But a lot of the time, um, those get back to them on my time, not really their time. I need to get better about that. But that is what I have for you in terms of the value of homework. I don't have an answer for you. I think it's something that you need to think about, uh, sleep on it, talk to your principal, department chair, talk to your team, think, read. There is so much literature out there about the value of homework. I have read a lot of it. This is why I have developed the opinion of optional homework. And that's also kind of where the unlimited test retakes came from. Um, again, the retake policy is back from August. I believe it is episode 13. If not, it's 12. And um, that's that. So I hope you are having a wonderful day. If you haven't already, please sign up for the All-Star Planning Masterclass. That is where I show you how the five pieces of the All-Star Planning process come together so that you can have a very strong curriculum that helps your lesson planning process go much smoother so you have all of the time in the world to read and think about your homework policy. I definitely suggest that you read up on it aside from this podcast. Um, just Google it. There's plenty of great articles out there. And please talk to your principal, your department chair, your team, and assess your homework situation because just because you've been doing it for years doesn't mean that it's the best way to do it or the right way to do it. And your kids will certainly thank you for it. So one way or the other, they'll thank you for it. it. Kids just want clarity. They want to know why they do stuff. So you can tell them, we do homework for this reason. I grade homework for this reason. You don't have to do homework for this reason. Kids will respect you just for a reason. So <laughs> let me know what you are doing with homework this year. I'm very curious what other people are doing. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss anything. New episodes come out every Tuesday, and I will talk to you next week. Bye for now.